This is a video lesson for grade seven, and we are doing 8.3, where we are talking, talking about bisecting lines. Um, I'd like to start first with that word, bisecting. So let's, let's dissect this word a little bit. So bi is when something is split into two, like a bicycle has two wheels. Let's see if we can get the close up here. Like a bicycle has two wheels. So there's two and then secting. Sect is section to split. So if I have a line here and then a line here, I'm going to label this AB and this will be CD. I could say that line CD is bisecting line AB. So first we're going to take a look in the textbook and I'm just going to put it up on my screen here, but I would suggest you be looking at your textbook because you won't get a very good picture from this video. So when we look at the textbook here, it says that a rhombus has all sides equal and opposite angles equal. So what this means that this is a rhombus and all sides check, 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 are equal. And each diagonal divides the rhombus into two congruent isosceles triangles, one here. How do you know the triangles are isosceles? Because they are same on both sides, they would be same on the third. How do you know the triangles are congruent? Congruent means the same on both sides. I know they're congruent because these marks indicate that they are the same length on all sides. These marks indicate they are of the same angle and therefore they are congruent or a mirror image. This part here, it does mention something called a mira. We do not have a mira, but I will be showing you how you can make bisecting lines without one. As we look down in the textbook a little more, it says when you draw a line to divide a line segment into two equal parts, you bisect, like I showed you earlier. When you bisect and the line is perpendicular, it is called a perpendicular bisector. Now we are going to follow the directions on the next page. And here they are. So the first direction, it says that we want to draw a, a line and label it AB. So I'm going to draw a line on my page. And I will label it A. And B. Then it says crease along the fold, open the paper, and the fold line is perpendicular. So what this means I'm going to basically make A touch B with a fold. And it says that this fold line is a bisector of AB. And not only that, if I look, because I seem to have done it rather well. It looks like that bisector line is at the 90 degrees, indicating that this bisector line is a 90 degree bisector, or what we call a perpendicular bisector. Now this word, perpendicular, we looked at that last lesson, and that means a 90 degree angle from the original. And this is an example of a perpendicular bisector because this line is bisecting this line. It is splitting it by two into two sections or sectors, sector one and two. Now in your textbook, the second part says use a mirror and place the mirror. Now we don't have that. A mirror is uh, basically a reflective 90 degree surface. Okay, now I'll get a piece of paper and we'll show you the next one. So the first instruction says to take a ruler and once again do A and B. So I'm going to make a line and it's going to have A and B. Now I do this a little quick in the video, so if it goes a little quick, just pause the video, catch up until you're ready. Then it says, and using a ruler, place the ruler so A is on one side of the ruler and B is on the other. So what that means is this, I have A on one side and B on the other. So here is my A dot and here is my B dot. 
Then it says draw a leg, uh, pardon me, draw line segments along both edges of the ruler. So what I have now is this, which very closely matches the picture in the textbook. I'll move in just a little bit for that. There we go. It says, repeat this process once more, but doing the opposite, so that A and B are now on opposite sides of the ruler. Okay, so now I've got B on the bottom and A on the top. There we are. And now I have a shape that looks like this. Draw li line segments along both edges of the ruler. Label points C and D where the line segments you drew intersect. So these were the line segments I drew. They intersect here and it says label those C and D. C, D. Label the points C and D. Join C and D. So I'm going to draw a joining line between C and D. Right there. It says CD is the perpendicular bisector of A and B. So here's line A, B. We drew lines here and here. We joined them up. And this is the perpendicular or 90 degree bisector of A and B. Now it says recall that each diagonal of a rhombus is a line of symmetry. And so what that means is that each diagonal here, we have this is diagonal across the points, has a line of symmetry. It's the same on both sides. The diagonal from A to B, it is the same on both sides. Now the diagonals also bisect each other. So each diagonal is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal. So let's take a look at what it shows in the textbook. Oop. Looks like I jumped a page. This is where I was reading from. It says, recall each diagonal of a rhombus is a line of symmetry. One, two lines of symmetry. The diagonals bisect each other. So each diagonal is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal. Now we're going to look at how we can do this using a compass. So at this point, you need a brand new sheet. You will need your compass and I'm anticipating a ruler. It says start by drawing a line segment AB. A, B. Then it says Set the compass so the distance between the compass and pencil points is greater than half of the length. So that means my compass needs to be further than half the length. There we go. Do not change the distance of the compass. Now I am to draw a line or a circle for B and a circle for A. So I'm just going to clear my desk so I can spin my paper because I do find that makes it easier to draw circles. So I haven't cleared away enough. There we go. One circle. Do not change the distance. And I now have two circles. Circle A and circle B. Then it says label points C and D where the circles intersect. So the circles intersect right here at C and this is D. It says join the points to form rhombus A, B, C, and D. Join the points to form rhombus A, B, C, and D. So let's see. I join them here and I connect the dots like the children's menu at a restaurant. I will end up with a rhombus. And there's my rhombus. Then it says draw the diagonal CD. Okay? 
drawing the diagonal CD. The diagonals intersect at E. Here is the intersection of AB and CD. And that is also a right angle bisector. CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. If you take a look in your textbook, there it is. And that's in assignment 8.3. And there it was step by step as we took care of it. So there's several ways that you can make perfect bisectors and perpendicular bisectors. Um, in the assignment, I notice uh, one, two, three, four, they all have direct instructions. And so I'm just gonna do one and two very fast so that you can see. It says draw a line segment, CD, length of eight centimeters. Okay, eight centimeters. Going up to eight, oh, there was eight. And it said that that should be CD, CD. It says use paper folding to draw its perpendicular bisector. So that's where we're gonna fold and we're gonna make it so that the fold goes perpendicular. Each step, you are going to need to follow these direct instructions. What's gonna happen is you'll read them all, you'll get confused. But if you do it one step at a time, one sentence at a time, you should be able to follow as I did in this tutorial. Ask me for help. I'd love to help you out with these numbers.